the channel. So it's a brisk day here in uh, Tennessee. It's about 29 degrees right now. As you guys can see, it's been snowing uh, for the past like three days now. Um, so uh, yeah, we got a bunch of snow on the ground, so not really able to do much. But as you guys can tell by the title of the video, the Vortec 2 valve is back. I'm gonna explain to you guys where it's been and why there hasn't been any content on it. And I'm gonna walk you guys through and show you basically everything I did to get it to run. Give you guys some pointers uh, so you can kind of do this on your own. So here it is. It's been it's been a while since it's been on the channel. Um, had some loose ends that needed to get tied up on the car. It needed intercooler piping. It needed a header installed. It has long tubes with a stock K member, so it's it's something that I couldn't tackle on the garage floor. So the owner. Uh, took it to one of our friends here in town uh, who has a lift that did all that work and it's back and uh, it actually runs now everything is installed um some details on it it's uh a mildly built 462 valve it's uh iron block stock crank it's got mild i-beam rods uh, some force pistons uh unported pi heads with what we think are like comp 262s or comp 2 we're, re we're really not sure what the cams are. They've got a little bit of lope to them. They sound pretty good. Uh, Rock Hard Racing Intake, uh, Vortec V1 S trim with a 3.33 pulley on it. Some old school stuff. It's pretty cool though. It's kind of nostalgic. It kind of takes me back to my car uh, before it was as crazy as it is now. Uh, except, you know, with this one, I got a little bit more knowledge and able to fine tune it a little bit more than mine. Oh six or seven years ago um so yeah that's just the kind of the basics on the engine it's got a little ebay vertical flow intercooler on it with a ebay uh piping kit uh your your typical vortec blow off valve and then uh okay, i'll start getting into the specifics of like the holly terminator x install so basically you uh what you do is you pull the stock your stock harness that plugs in over here in these three ports uh, and it basically runs all out to all your vital stuff on your engine your coils your injectors your iac crankshaft position sensor camshaft position sensor all that you take all that off you don't need it anymore and uh you use the supplied harness that comes with the holly terminator and i can just show you guys a couple of pieces of it right here and it's coming up and what i did is uh, I went in the passenger side floorboard and I cut a hole in the trans tunnel. I put a uh, grommet there and I ran the harness through there, up through the trans tunnel behind the motor. So it's a nice clean install because you really, you've got to take the heater box and the dash and everything out to get behind the dash to cut a hole over here. And it's a lot of work. That method works just as good. So uh, the harness comes up, everything's labeled. You got your cylinders, you got all your injectors and your cool pack wiring labeled cylinder so, so you got like right here cylinder five cylinder so cylinder five coil pack cylinder five injector and you just go through and plug all that stuff in it's pretty self-explanatory your iac your tps your crankshaft position sensors down here got your cam set camshaft position sensor over here all that stuff plugs in make sure you tie it up nice and neat and tidy um these cars come from a factory with a returnless style fuel system. Uh, the factory ECU pulse modulates the fuel pump uh, and then it controls fuel pressure with a fuel rail pressure sensor that did go here. So you are going to have to convert the car to a return style fuel system. I had this old mounting block right here that I never used on my Division X return style fuel system. And so uh, I put that on, on this car. Got a Magna Fuel fuel pressure regulator. I capped off this side. Obviously that adapts it. I mean, with these BBK fuel rails, I could have adapted it right here as well. So, I mean, it's not like you need this piece to do that whenever you go to an aftermarket rail. This was really designed for the stock rails. Anyways, I uh, got the Low Dollar Motorsports uh, 100 PSI pressure transducer right here to monitor fuel pressure. And then the return line goes all the way back, uh, tied up nice and clean underneath the car, and it goes back to the fuel tank. I got a bulkhead fitting and drilled into the stock fuel hat. And uh, that line basically dumps fuel right back into the top of the fuel tank. It's pretty simple to do. I don't have any pictures, but you guys uh, get the drift. So 
that's really it for the front part up here. It's kind of, it's, it, it's really a plug and play pretty simple. Um, you don't have to put any of that harness back in. And then coming over on the side, you guys have seen the car before. It's got like some Cobra R replicas on it. Pretty slick looking car. Coming in. I got all my wiring hit over here. I'm gonna clean this up some more later. But uh, basically, most of the wiring comes right here and goes through that hole I cut, which is like right around here. And I use one of the oral seals at grommets. It actually tells you what the part number is in the Terminator X install instructions. So all this is over here. The uh, coal drivers are plugged into the harness. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then what I did is I took these hose clamps and I bolted them to the bottom where the glove compartment goes. And I ran the main harness over into the kick panel over here. I took the stock ECU out and I mounted the Terminator X ECU in place of it and ran the harness like that. So I had a couple of guys ask me some specific questions. You guys, excuse my sniffling, it's cold out here. Um, I had a couple of guys ask me questions about uh, some specific wiring. So on the Holly harness, if I can remember correctly, it tells you in the instructions, but I think it's this wire right here. That wire is what turns the Holly ECU on. So that wire needs to go to a power source that gets power whenever you turn the ignition on. One other key thing with this wire is it has to have power while the car is cranking. Um, and Whenever you turn that ignition switch to start to start the car, it cuts a lot of power circuits off in the car. Um, and if you have that tied into one of those that cuts off, then you're gonna get a no start condition because the ECU is actually shutting off when you're trying to start the car. So if you go into the factory plug, and I don't have this kick panel pulled off, but if you go into the factory ECU plug and you can pull up some wiring uh, diagrams online, you need to get one of the power wires that goes to the ECU goes to the stock ECU and you need to tap that wire into it. That power wire that goes into the stock ECU, it'll have power at all times when the ignition is on. Um, it, it's basically just a red wire. Um, you can get a multimeter and test them. Um, like I said, I can't show it to you guys, but if you're trying to get into this kind of install, you need to get a multimeter and learn the basics of checking for power and uh, checking for continuity and real basic, simple electrical stuff. That'll just help you out in the long run. Um, so you find that wire, and then while I'm up here, uh, you have to use your input-output harness. Uh, where is it? It's down on this harness. Basically, you'll see it when you get the kit, and it has your four, uh, your four inputs and your four outputs on it, and you need to wire one of your outputs into uh, your fan control. Um, you can still control the fan with the stock CCRM, which is up here. This is your CCRM right here. And the fender well on that is basically a big relay pack and that sends power to a few different things in the car, but mainly it sends power to the fan. And so there is a, and you can also find this in your wiring diagram. There is a uh, fan high wire that goes to where the stock ECU went in that big plug. And uh, the wire color is uh, light green and violet. Um, so you find that wire and it has to be grounded. When you ground that wire, it triggers the relay and sends power to the high speed fan. And so you're gonna wire whatever output from your Terminator ECU, you're gonna wire it into that light green and violet wire. And when you're gonna go in your tuning, you're gonna set up uh, a ground output and whenever the ECU sees a certain coolant temperature, it'll ground that wire out, it'll turn your fan on. So it's pretty simple stuff once you get to messing with it and kind of dig into it and get a little bit better understanding of how it all works. All right, so this, obviously if you had the battery in the front, you wouldn't run all your wires back here, you'd run them to the battery. But for this, you have, you have a main red wire and a main black ground wire that connected to their own spot on the ECU. And the Holly instructions tell you that those wires have to be connected directly to the battery. There's no substitute. They have to be directly on the battery. So be, be sure that you mount those there. There's also a red wire that feeds the, the fuel pump relay, which you guys saw in that little bundle of wires I had up there. That relay was the fuel pump and uh, 
coil power relay. Um, that wire, you can extend it and you can just run it straight back to your uh, to your positive terminal on your battery as well, and that's what this one is. So, uh, yeah, that's that's about it for that. You just need to make sure that those two wires are connected directly to the battery. And then uh, a couple of extra things I did. Um, you got to kind of tap into the stock wiring on these if you want to use the stock wiring for the fuel pump. Um, so since we went to a return style fuel system, the fuel pump just runs at 100% all the time, and your pressure is controlled by that fuel pressure regulator. So I got a 40 amp relay here, and uh, it's triggered. Uh, it's triggered by the green wire, which you guys can't see it here. There's a green wire that runs back here from the ECU, and that is your fuel pump trigger wire. And that will trigger, you know, it can power like a small fuel pump, um, but you're better off just running a relay. Uh, but basically you want to use that wire to trigger a relay to send power to your fuel pump. So that's what that's how that's wired up. So this thing will trigger whenever the ECU tells it to. Turn the fuel pump on. And then uh, there's a bunch of junk back here, but you gotta go over and what color is that wire? If you want to use the uh, stock wiring, what I had to do was ground out. And what color is that? I think it's red and black. Yep. You need to ground out that red and black wire that goes to your uh, to your fuel pump driver module. Ground that out, and that basically turns your all your stock wiring uh, into, uh, at least that's how I had to manipulate it on this car. It made it where I could use the stock wiring to run the fuel pump all the time. You could obviously just wire a fuel pump on uh, with its own uh, on wiring as well, but I wanted to use the factory wiring. And about it, uh, the Holly does have an O2 sensor. So you're gonna have to mount that O2 sensor uh, into your header or uh, into your turbo downpipe, according to what situation, but that O2 sensor needs to be in your exhaust stream. And then you can get into the instructions and there's more detailed information on that. And then what I did is I ran, I ran the touch screen up here to where the stock dash is. And basically you see all your data right here. Hear the fuel pump kick on. Hear it turn off. That's a five second fuel prime that's set up in the tune. And uh, you got all your vitals right here. Um, for the guys, I know there's gonna be people that are gonna ask. Um, you can do a more robust install with this. Um, it's gonna take a lot of work to make your stock tack, your stock mile per hour gauge work. Um, you know, your stock uh, coolant temperature gauge and your this, this is just a dummy gauge anyway, so I don't even know why you would still use that. Your fuel gauge will still work, and your battery voltmeter gauge will still work. You're gonna get all these warnings down here because you're not gonna have the stock computer to control your ABS. It's gonna throw a check engine light, and then the PATS is gonna freak out. None of that will affect the car running because you have the Terminator, the Terminator X controlling everything on the engine. One other thing I've, want to mention guys whenever you take the stock ECU out of these cars when you go to um, start the car the stock starter will not engage anymore um, you break the link somewhere in the wiring in here and I couldn't didn't really dig far enough to figure it out um, but what you got to do is uh, you've got to get down here under the dash to where the big plug goes into the bottom of the column for the ignition and uh, there is a trigger wire in there and only that wire gets power whenever you put this keyed ignition into the start into the start position it sends a 12 volt signal out well when you take stock ECU out that 12 volt signal doesn't get up to the starter relay that's up in the front up here and you don't get your starter's not going to turn over so you got to take a wire and jump it into that power wire down there I can't remember what it is right now you guys once again you can get in the wiring uh, schematics and find it or you can just test with a multimeter. Um, you wanna run a jumper wire from there uh, through the firewall and then the fuse box. This is your starter relay right here. Find the trigger wire. I think it's red and white. You can, you can unclip this and you can pull this up off here and you can find the red and white wire that I think, I think it's pin 87, but don't quote me on that. Basically it goes to this point right the, the post right here in the bottom of this relay. 
and you need to run that run that wire, which you can see I got it right here. And you need to connect that wire to that pole on the relay. So whenever you turn the ignition switch, it sends 12 volts to this relay, and this relay sends 12 volts to your starter solenoid, turns your starter over and starts the car. Guys, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but this was kind of impromptu. And it's really just a quick guide and dirty of how you do this. Um, your results and situation are gonna vary based on how what the, you're doing this install in and how in detail you wanna get with it. So uh, before I start the car, it does have an exhaust leak right now. So it is, it's still untuned. Um, it has a gas at a tune that I put into it. It runs pretty decently, um, but it does have an exhaust leak in the driver's side header. And that is causing the the O2 sensor, which is also installed on the driver's side header, to get a, a lean reading because it's getting fresh air into the exhaust and it's causing the O2 sensor to get false reading. So it does have an exhaust leak, but it does run. So we'll go ahead and start it up real quick, let you guys hear it idle, let you hear the blower, 